Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Well, I was stationed here in 2002 as an as a Air Force cadet chaplain, and I heard that the best school here in the city was Colorado Springs Christian School. I had I was a captain. I had been in maybe 13 years, and I said one day when I grow up and retire, I only want to work one place, and I want to work with middle schoolers, and this was the place. Well, I have the honor and blessing of being the school chaplain. I get the blessing of, first of all, leading chapels here. So we have over five chapel services. So I invite guest speakers in with the sole purpose of helping our kids to come to know Christ. Or if they know Christ, they just grow in Him. And um, the second thing I get the blessing of doing is, is talking to kids. So sometimes I'll go in classrooms and we'll have different discussions on a lot of different things, whether it be history, Bible, etc. Also, children have things going on like their parents, I have divorce issues, the getting along with brother and sister, boyfriend, girlfriend issues. We ask them to only have boyfriend and girlfriends when they get 25, but something happens in middle school where yeah. the, the girls and boys, that's, so we talk a little bit about boy girl. Come on, buddy. So yeah. I get the, and I get a blessing of talking to the staff. Sometimes they have issues going on. They just want to pray, confirmation, so encouraging teachers and parents as well. Christian families are not perfect. No, sir. As we, we have issues. We have things that Jesus needs to be a part of. Matter of fact, if we pray for the issues and we get them worked out, that helps them come to Christ. So, yeah. you know, we don't want life to be um, uh, status quo. We want issues to come up so they can say, Jesus, I need you. Um, I describe it as that every day we open our doors so that boys and girls can come to know Christ. Christian education doesn't cost, it pays. And the reason why it pays is because um, when kids come here, they're gonna have, I hear this from the students, not just that I see it, but they say our teachers love us. Well, that love causes them to open up to the teachers. And as they open up to the teachers, they open up to Jesus. And we only have one thing to give them. History is important, math's important, and so is science, but Jesus is the most important thing. So we help them to grow in Christ. So we get to know them personally. And so that's really exciting. Well, isn't it an amazing thing that when I was growing up in my public school, my teachers were Christians, the society pretty much had Christian, Christian morals. Today, I can't imagine what it's like to be a 12 year old in 2024 with a cell phone and all the things that are available. So as they learn about Christ in kindergarten, Really, they know things of the world are out there, but they're learning truth from the very beginning. The middle schoolers aren't caught up in the drugs and all those things. They're high, but they're high on Jesus. And they're, they're building a nice, strong foundation so that when they're 18 years old and they go to, whether they go to Harvard or they go to Old, old Roberts University, they're solid in the Lord and they know how to both be a light and also how to share the light. So that's, that's it. So with home and church and school working together, guess who gets the most time? We've got them seven hours a day. And it's so much fun because you would think that the classroom is the only environment that we have. I have the blessing of playing football with third graders, touch football. And guess what? I'm strategically on the right team, talking to the right people at the right time. And the parking lot, again, we're going to be out there for 30 minutes anyway. Parents aren't moving because the lines are moving slowly. Might as well say, how you doing? And if I ping them every day, the parent that says I'm doing great, I can honestly say, no, you're not. How can I pray for you? And they will tell you, but you've got to ask them. So there's so many opportunities to tell folks about Christ. Classroom, parking lot. How about the sporting events? Where are they going? They're sitting right there for four to two hours. I'm sorry you sat by me, but you're here. And let's talk about, boy, that's a great game, but how's Jesus in your life? What's, how's your Jesus meter? And some of them will say, you know, I haven't been to church in a long time, and I really haven't been in the Word. And let me tell you the cost of that. It isn't worth it. So, yeah. Well, you and I know in the military, some folks came in for the military education. Some came in to find a husband or a wife. Some came in to see the world. Some came in because they just like to fight, and that'd be cool. You know, here we came in for one reason, and that is that we want to use our gifts that many will come to know Christ. So whether you're a kindergarten teacher, a high school teacher, middle school PE, how about if you're a coach? We all have the same mission. We have the same love for God, and we wake up every day saying, God, it's not my will or my plan. Lord, what are you, how are you going to use me today and make this lesson come alive that many may come to know Christ? It's, it's amazing what God can do when you say, here I am, Lord, use me. And to have 150 people all thinking the same thing in the parking lot, whether you talk to me or someone else, you're going to get the same story. Jesus is Lord. You can't make it without him. And you're not going to go to heaven on your good looks. And by the way, you really don't look that good. I wouldn't go on that merit. You need Jesus. 
um, the first thing they can do is, uh, number one, is pray. Pray that God would just continue to grow this lighthouse. The Lord is blessing us so much, we need bigger buildings, bigger buses, bigger parking lot, so they can pray. And if they have the financial means, of course they can give, but prayer would be number one. They can give, if they have children and your children are doing well in school, but you just find that you're not getting all the needs met in whatever school you're going to, I know a place. I know a place that can really help you, whether they're kindergartners or high schoolers. If they just have a heart to live for God, this is the place to be. So send the kids, pray, financial. Yeah. We have lots of opportunities to serve. Everyone is not called to be a teacher. You know, some folks have great skills with their hands. Maybe they put air conditioners together. Maybe they do roofing. There may be others that cook well. Our teachers love meals and come bless us with a meal. Some folks are great at doing parking lots. Whatever your gift is, you can come to this ministry and we'll find a place for you to serve so that God can bless you. So lots of opportunity to serve here. I get up every single day saying, here I am, send me Lord. And it is an amazing thing when I think I'm in a place, let's pretend like I'm in the auditorium in the hallway and I'm just standing there going, well, like, why am I here? If I'll stay right there for a minute, there'll be a kid that'll walk by and I'll just ask them, how you doing? And they'll say, I'm glad you asked. Maybe the puppy died today. Maybe they just hit their first three-pointer and they want to tell me about it. But just being right smack dab in the middle of where God would have me to be. Some guys my age are out golfing. Boy, are they missing it. Some are on cruises and going to Hawaii. Boy, are they missing it. The greatest joy is waking up saying, here I am, Lord. Use me in the lives of these young people. And the nation or the world that they're going to live in, my world was easy in the 1960s and 70s. They've got a world, they've got to have the Gospels to make it. So I want them to be strong so that when they live to 2050, 2060, they'll remember there was this guy that told me, there was this team of teachers that loved me and said, there's only one way, and they will be a light. That's my prayer. And that's why I wake up every day. The only thing that the Lord has, has really put on my heart is I'm so excited. I am believing. I'm believing a crazy belief. You want to hear it? Yeah. I kind of see a CSES with, that is holding maybe 2,000 people with tennis courts and a huge cafeteria and just make it a huge difference in this community. The, the, dream, the vision that I have is probably a couple hundred million dollars, but I believe God can do it because I believe everyone who wants a Christian education, it should be available to them and that the walls will there'll always be room for them. So from swimming to tennis to hockey to ice skating, all the things that kids need to grow in the Lord, that's what I want to see happen. So that's my prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you didn't leave the uh, witnessing to the angels, but you left it to us to be a light for you. And Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity. Lord, we know what kind of vessels we are, but Lord, you said you would do great things through us if we would just make ourselves available to you. So here we are, Lord, send us, use us, that many may come to Jesus, know Jesus as Lord and Savior because of the light that is in us. Bless us, O oh Lord God, especially in these last days. We know it's gonna to be tough, but Lord, we're just gonna shine that much brighter. As the darkness gets darker, we're just gonna shine brighter. Bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen. Celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer His call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome.